Ladies. <laughs> I don't believe we've met. At least not on this side of the grave. <laughs> oh, old guests, please leave your body at the door and do come in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe we've met. At least not on this side of the grave. <laughs> Hey everyone, so I got, I got him, I got the combination of basically all my favorite life sizes combined. He has the outfit of the Edwardian butler, he has the candles of the skeleton butler, he has the voice of the ghastly gentleman. I just really love that audio track. And then yeah, he actually has the like the face and hands of Dr. Shivers. So all in all, Jimmy actually happened to make a life size that's a combination of all my favorite characters. And although he's not like one of my like top top like actual characters, the audio is like one of the best in my opinion that Jimmy's made. So it's just really awesome. Now, you're probably wondering, why is he so short? Because you have this dude, and then you have him. He's, like, significantly shorter than what he's supposed to be. Which is, like, a butler's height. As you can see, he's much shorter. Well, the thing is, the person that previously owned this, I guess they did, wanted to be more sturdy. They basically reconstructed his whole frame. Like, the, the torso and everything is original. The arms are original. Um, but basically everything else was turned into like PVC. So in this video, I'm just going to be showing you how that is because since I actually, because since I bought a skeleton bower from Chris Sauls that came with like a bunch of snapped pieces and it was like had two com capacitors just exploded on the board that actually has the right poles. So I can actually use those for him. But if you're curious how he works, so the mask is really easy, to, thankfully, to actually get apart because there's just a seam right here that you just undo. And if you didn't see the previous or the previous video of him in action, the eyes have a split gear, and this is like this. And when I first got this, it's like that. Wow, they must have designed it really well because it's quiet when it turns, and it turns really easily. I know the heads turn fast on these, but nope, the the gear was um, split. And the video I uploaded earlier that's really pixely, that was the video the seller sent me, and it worked. But this guy was being used with the 10 volt when it takes a 6, so that probably just stripped the, um, the one of the gears in here. Probably just the 10 tooth, I would hope. But yeah, so this is how it looks. So there's off and sensor trying me. So the circuit board is actually in the head. Same with her and him. The 2008 to 2009 pole based ones, any things from that era, I'll say, or those years, they're like this. Like the BJ's Witch, which was sold a lot. Same place that this guy was sold at. She also was like that. And there's actually this... Um, signal cord is what it's called and if i unplug this and i'm just showing you guys this because most of you have never seen this before i've not really seen too much of it either and it's just like that 
and now I can take off the head because that sends power to the neck motor actually. So if I wanted to, without, if I didn't want it to buzz or anything, I could just leave that unplugged actually. So yeah, that's why you'll see a lot of videos where like her head's not turning or his head's not turning or his head's not turning because there's a separate plug and people forget to do that. Especially with this 2008 model right here, because it's not this it's not this well developed. But yeah, and he has a hip ring actually in his clothes. But my challenge is to somehow get the clothes off of this with the pole still on. And you, and it's like why not? I may as well do it in video. And here's his hand, which is actually I checked. Because, like, Jimmy reused his hands all the time. Uh, what's the... That's, like, the beheaded bride's hand she holds her head with. They use that hand on the sassy witch. They also use that hand on the sassy witch. This is the dead eye Drake hand. You can see the little imprint there. And this is actually, I believe, the same hand that was used for this. But this guy, he actually has his own unique molded uh, hand. Which is pretty neat. So we'll sit that down there. And then... Yeah, so... Although this is technically like sturdier, I mean, he's just too short and it's not original. And as a collector, I know about that originality. But I can't complain for the price I got on that. Oh, that looks sort of bad. Because, well, I, so I did spend, oh, that's, oh boy. It's pretty, oh my gosh. Can't really see that, but... So like while I did spend basically like two hundred dollars on this, it's it was on my Craigslist and there's like no BJ's around here, which is where this guy was sold at, and that's why he's so hard to find. So that was incredible. Yeah, here he is, and yeah, this looks sort of sketch right here. And there's this. I just need to figure out. I mean, I. I just have to figure out how to actually get this around here because this looks really um like advanced right here. Okay. So yeah, this there may need to be some sewing done on his clothes, but yeah. So I'll figure this out off camera, but I just want to show you how he was uh modified. And then this just goes down further, but uh, yeah. So thanks for watching. Okay guys, so all of this was in the shoes. Like, look at all of this spray foam. I mean, all of this was all up in the shoes. I had to scrape it out using this spoon here and this screwdriver. But there's all the dirt in the bottom of there. But yeah, so these were entirely full of the foam. This one's still drying, but it looks relatively nice. And then this one is making some progress on drying. See, a lot better than it once was. And this was also really bad. So although there's still a lot on here, it's a lot better than it was before. So yeah, that's the progress I've made. And I hope you see how bad this, this really is. So here's just a quick look at the frame. There's so a little bit of that black soot on there, but there is a lot. And this is the stuff that like gets all over your clothes and doesn't want to come off. I got most of it cleaned off just with the dry tissue. But if you look here, there's some serious damage to the shoulder. Like there's a huge crack, like the dude must have fallen over at some point. Like it goes all the way back. And also on this shoulder, there's a little bit of a crack as well. But yeah, and so I'm just so glad I got that spray foam out of there. And the thing is, with this whole like PVC structure that the dude made, like there's there's some spray foam in it. And I don't know if I, 
hopefully I can like repurpose it somehow since like it's night like the the PVC pieces themselves are nicely picked out for like you know like a custom prop. But there's just like on the one pole that you don't see that was a PVC pole, there's just so much of that stuff on there. So hopefully that'll get fixed. There's like a relatively large sized hole near his like crotch on the the pants. And then there's there's these cracks. And I think that hole could be sewn. But this is just how it is, I guess. But thankfully that's not noticeable on the outside and doesn't affect its functionality. But uh, yeah, so since I have the screwed up butler from Chris Saul's, I'm gonna go up in the attic and I'm gonna get those poles. And there is a hip ring already in the pants, but I'm just gonna get the piece that you can actually, you know, hold those things in with. That already had, that like the, yeah. But yeah, so I'm gonna go and get the other pieces. So I have the, the top pole and the two bottom ones. I'll need two more like middle poles and the hip ring. And once I get that, he'll be ready to be fully assembled with all his original parts. So yeah, see you in the next part. Okay, so now we have the two new poles with the hip ring. Like I said, there's already like a wire hip ring embedded in his clothes, but it'll still be fine with this. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could just unscrew those two and just take the hip ring off. Which I may actually do if need be, but for now I'll just leave it. So, yeah. So, I just put these on, which I may need to flip the poles around a little bit. Or not. This one is just going right on. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll flip them around. Because one end of the poles is smaller, so that that's how they sort of connect in that way. Just gotta... Sorry you can't see right now. But... Okay. okay, wait. Let me see something. Okay, well apparently that was the right way, so we're just going to have to push harder. I guess one of the poles is denser or something, but you get the point, so. Yeah, this isn't going on too well, but that can probably be adjusted. But yeah, so. I mean, it's pretty good. So, <coughs> sorry, I have a cold. Now what we're going to do is just use this hip rein and hopefully this will fit in. What is with these poles? Okay, I'm pretty sure that's like shredding the plastic a little bit, but hey, you know what? It fits. So yeah, he is much taller now than what he once was. Like this dude is tall. <laughs> He's really tall. So, uh, yeah. And that may be just because of the poles, but whatever. It's, it's holding. So now I'm going to put on the clothes and see what happens. I tried to pull the pants up and they wouldn't fit, so I've now unscrewed the hip ring, which I could use for something else, I guess, or just if anybody in the comments needs this, let me know. If there's this, like, snapped or something. But, yeah, so now this should work. And I'll hopefully get back to you when... It's all set up. Okay guys, so here he is. And as you can tell, he is significantly taller than he once was. I'd say he was just, he was about at her height, I would say. 
and now he's like with at the level of this dude right here. So yeah, I mean his pants don't look weird at the bottom. He's taller and it's just more much more original than what it would normally be. And I mean honestly from afar he looks like in, he's in like mint condition. I mean he looks great. Like absolutely wonderful. Um I will get into the I'll show like the hole and everything that was caused when they glued the pants in there, that little black spot. And yeah. So and here he is, like everything looks great. Um it's a little bit of that like eye goop for eye goop forming there, but that could be probably removed. Um the eyes do have a split gear. And then the mouth works and the head just it's just the motor's just completely loose in there. But yeah, like, and I also folded this up so you can actually see his hand. And here's the bad part. So here's the hole. So yeah, this is a major hole. So you can see that this is a very large space. Like I can fit like almost my whole hand in there. And I, I have relatively big hands too. And there's an also there's an additional large hole on this side. Now what I didn't realize at first, but the the bottom of the like the leather boots are actually in very rough shape at the bottom. So as you can see, it's just really like eaten up, like some animal or something just got in there and brutally went at this thing. Like, yeah, it's pretty bad stuff. Pretty bad stuff, but I'd say overall, because the boots, they go on top of the shoes, but I'd say overall, m minus the big hole right there, which can probably be re-sewn at some point, and the leather here, which there's nothing that can really be done about that as far as I know, it's in pretty good condition. Now, there's still a few little like particles of like spray foam in the base, like I sh showed you earlier, but that's not really going to harm the item at all, because... That's just a few like dried up specks that are like deep within the shoe or whatever. And those two poles in there, I tried, they're just stuck in there. In fact, when I had to take out uh, the like top pole out of the hip ring, that was actually very difficult. When I did like the whole thing like shot up in the air, almost hit the ceiling fan. But yeah, so the hip ring's off and the other ones in here, but I mean, he just looks great. I mean, he looks much better than what he did initially when I got him. So yeah, I know that I didn't really fix anything mechanically, but I mean, it took like about 45 minutes, I'd say, or maybe more to get all the spray foam out. Plus I had to let this dry in like my kitchen sink overnight, the whole base and the shoes and everything. I had to reattach the shoes, which wasn't the easiest thing in the world. And then I had to go up and dig, go into the depths of my attic to get the parts, remove the hip ring, and just put everything together. And here he is. So, yeah, I mean, besides um, like two, a split gear and either a stripped or split gear, and uh, the hole there, the only thing that really can't be fixed, as far as I know, is just the leather and the boots. But besides that, this guy can be like restored to 100% working, which is incredible. Although I paid, now I did pay 200 for this guy, but keep in mind, he was fairly local, which I never thought would happen with this one in particular, since it was sold at BJ's Wholesale, and I think there's like one BJ's around me. I'm not too sure. I've like rarely seen them before. We only have like Sam's and Costco around here. And, because that's where he was sold, and it's just incredible. And this what it was all, all, basically all the the cash in my wallet at the time. So my wallet is relative, <laughs> relatively empty now, but I am planning to sell a few things to sort of make up the price. But I'm just really glad to have him. I mean, like I said before, it's like he's a combination of like some of my favorite life sizes, and I also have like. I have so many of the candle ones now. In fact, if I get the doorman, I'll have like every single Jimmy Life Size with this kind of like candelabra. So I have the skeleton butler, 
that guy and that guy. I guess I'll need to get the second gen skeleton baller since they are, it is a little bit, like quite a bit different than the 2008 model. And then I would need the, uh, the quivering doorman. But if I, if I got happen to get those two, I would actually have all the candelabra, I guess, series, but uh, yeah. So thank you guys for watching this restoration. I really hope you enjoyed it i know there wasn't much of me like actually doing stuff on camera but i was i brought you along to show the progress that was made and this is part one there will be a part two restoration most likely by the jimmy fan because <laughs> you know how that all works um where the actual mechanics of it will be restored but yeah so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you next time Ha 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 ha!